It's a wonderful sight to see all of you fathers sitting shoulder to shoulder with your sons and listening to the teachings of the Lord and receive the counsel of the general authorities of the Church. It's always a joy to be united with men and young men of the priesthood. But there is something special about seeing fathers and sons here together. It is a visual reminder of two of the most powerful elements of our theology, priesthood and family. The priesthood is the divine power through which families are sealed together. Everything in the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, including the ordinances of the Holy Temple, is focused on the possibilities of families becoming part of the eternal family of God. Tonight I want to talk to you fathers and sons about how to talk to each other. There is no other relationship quite like that which can, can and should exist between a boy and his dad. It can be one of the most nurturing, joyful relationships in life, one that can have a profound impact on who boys become and also who dads become. Now, I understand that there are some of you young men who do not have fathers with whom you can have these kinds of conversations. And some of you men do not have sons or have lost your sons to accident or illness. But much of what I say tonight will apply to uncles and grandfathers and priesthood leaders and other mentors who sometimes fill the gaps for these significant father-son relationships. You see, we're all on a journey. Dads are a little further down the road, but none of us have arrived at our final destination. We are all in the process of becoming who we will one day be. Fathers and sons can play a critical role in helping each other become the best that we can be. I know that father-son relationships are never perfect, but everything I'm going to suggest to you tonight is possible if you'll put the effort to make it happen. Young men, your father, you're your father's pride and joy. In you, they see the promising future and their hope for a better, improved version of themselves. Your accomplishments are a joy to them. Your worries and problems are their worries and problems. Fathers, you are the primary model of manhood for your sons. You are their most meaningful mentor. And believe it or not, you are their hero in countless ways. Your words and your example are a great influence on them. Tonight I want to give you young men three simple suggestions on how to take full advantage of your relationship with your dad. And then I want to give you fathers three suggestions about relating to and communicating with your sons. To you ironic priesthood holders, I believe that by doing these three simple things, you can increase your relationship with your father and make it even better than it is right now. First, trust your father. He is not perfect, but he loves you and would never do anything he didn't think was for your best interest. So talk to him. Share your thoughts and your feelings and your dreams and your fears. The more he knows about your life, the better chance he has to understand your concerns and to give you good counsel. When you put your trust in your dad, he will feel the responsibility of that trust and try harder than ever to understand and to help. As your father, he is entitled to inspiration on your behalf. His advice to you will be heartfelt, the heartfelt expressions of someone who knows and loves you. Your dad wants more than anything for you to be happy and successful. So why wouldn't you not want to trust someone like that? Boys, trust your dads. Second, take an interest in your father's life 
Ask about his job, his interests, his goals. How did he decide to do the work that he does? What was he like when he was your age? How did he meet your mother? And as you learn more about him, you may find that his experiences help you to better understand why he responds the way that he does. Watch your dad. Watch how he treats your mother. Watch how he performs his church callings. Watch how he interacts, inter, interacts with other people. You'll be surprised what you learn about him just by watching him and listening to him. Think about what you don't know about him and find out. Your love, admiration, and understanding will increase by what you learn. Boys, be interested in your dad's life. And third, ask your father for advice. Now, let's be honest. He's probably going to give you his advice whether you ask for it or not. But it just works so much better when you ask. Ask for his advice on church activity, classes, on friends, on school, on dating, on sports or other hobbies. Ask for his counsel on your church assignments, on preparing for your missions, on decisions or choices you have to make. Nothing shows respect for another person as much as asking for his advice, because what you are really saying when you ask for advice is, I appreciate what you know and the experiences you have had, and I value your ideas and suggestions. Those are nice things for a father to hear from his son. In my experience, fathers who are asked for advice try harder to give good, sound, useful counsel. By asking your father for advice, you not only receive the benefits of his input, but you also provide him with a little extra motivation to strive to be a better father and a better man. He will think more carefully about whatever it is that he advises, and he will work harder to walk the talk. Young men, ask your dad for advice. Okay, fathers, now it's your turn. Let's talk about some things you can do in enhancing your relationship with your sons. You will notice that there is some linkage between the three suggestions I'm going to give you and the suggestions I just gave your sons. That isn't coincidental. First, fathers, listen to your sons. Really listen to them. Ask the right kind of questions and listen to what they have to say each time you have a few minutes together. You need to know, not to guess, but to know what is going on in your son's life. Don't assume that you know how he feels just because you were young once. Your sons live in a very different world from the one in which you grew up.